In this video, we're diving into how you can scrape thousands of businesses from Google Maps without spending hours on a spreadsheet. Most people think you need tools or shady software to do this, but what if I told you there's a way to automate the entire process for basically free and on autopilot? All powered by Enident, a no-code, low-code workflow builder that quietly pulls in leads so you can focus on closing them. This is what the workflow looks like, and this is what the sub workflow that we're going to be calling looks like. So we're going to go to our air table first. The business that we're going to be looking for are med spas in the city of Long Beach. So we're going to go ahead and test this workflow. Let's just watch it in real time work. And it skipped the first one, but that's okay. We're at 39, 40, and still going. I had to stop the workflow because I want to get on with this video. The first thing you're going to do is create an Airtable base. I already made one here. Then you're going to make two tables, one being for search queries and one being for websites. And we're only going to put three columns, business, city, and created. For created, you'll want to make sure you select the created times and it will automatically populate for you. For our second table, the websites, we're going to have business, city, search query, and website. And the website will be entered as a URL. So for our very first node, it's going to be an Airtable trigger. So hit the plus sign and type in Airtable. Hit this one, go down to triggers. That's the one we want. Once you're in here, you're gonna to wanna to create an account, hit access token, click your icon on the top right, go to builder hub, and you're just gonna create a token. It's very simple. Go ahead and name it here, and you wanna add your scopes. And the scopes that we want are all listed right here. So go ahead and make sure you select all those data records read, data records write, schema bases read. So they'll all be here and just go ahead and select the ones you want. Once you've created an access token, you want to give Enidin the permission to access your bases. So go ahead and come down here and click add base. And then you should be able to select the ones that you've created. I've already added the ones that we're going to be demoing today. So, but if you wanted to just click one and it should be added. So for the base, I'll show you a quick tip on how to get that. So for the base, it's always going to start with a peep. So if you go over to our URL and you see airtable.com slash a peep, so you want to just highlight everything after that forward slash up until the next forward slash copy that and paste that here for your table it will always start with a tbl so from tbl on to the next forward slash copy that and paste that here i forgot to add that it should be by id for base and table for our next node we're going to be using a basic llm chain node so hit the plus sign basic llm chain make sure they're connected open it up hit model you can use any large language model that you want. The one I'm using is going to be from OpenAI. 4.0 Mini is plenty for me and it's pretty cheap. If you want to know how to connect your API, go ahead and follow the documentation provided here. Or you can ask their AI assistant here, which is pretty useful. So I'm going to open this up. By default, it will be set to connected to chat trigger node, but we're going to define below. Make sure you select expression for your prompt. Let's go ahead and enlarge it. This is the prompt I had ChatGPT create for me, which has been working pretty well. I had to tweak it a little bit. You guys can go ahead and copy this. I'll also link it down below. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you select this right here, require specific output format. It will be unselected by default, but make sure you select it. Then you're gonna have this output parser option. So go ahead and select that. So I had ChatGPT create this because we want the output of our data in a format that we can actually use. And it has to look something like this. You guys can go ahead and copy this. I will also link this below. If I test this step, all of our data is gonna be formatted correctly. But the issue is it's all clumped up. We wanna separate it one by one. And that's what our next node is gonna do. If you're a little lost, our output is basically med spas in every sub neighborhood in Long Beach. To split it up, we're gonna be going with split out node. So go ahead and hit that one. Don't need that because we have it here. So I'm gonna open it up. Don't have to do anything to it. So once you test the step, everything will be split out one by one. Each sub neighborhood is split out one by one. Before I feed this into the next workflow, we wanna clean it up a bit. Hit the plus sign and we want an edit fields node, this one here. I already did that. And we're gonna go to the mode. We're gonna go to manual mapping. I like to select schema because it's easier for me to read. So what I dragged in would be the output here. So you would just drag it in like that. And I also wanted the Airtable ID, the Airtable business, and the Airtable city. I just renamed that one to location. So you can also rename them. So once you test this step, your output should look something like this. So we have our output, our location, the ID, and the business. And if you look here, there's 18 items. 
meaning there's 18 sub neighborhoods that we're going to be feeding into the next node. We don't want to do all of them at once. So we need to do it one by one. And we're going to do that with a loop node. Just hit the plus sign, type in loop. This is the one you're going to select. It's going to look like this. Set the batch size to one if it's not already. And that's it. Before we move on to the next node, we have to create our next workflow. It looks like this. Every workflow needs a trigger. And the one we're going to be using for this one, type in execute, select execute sub workflow, go down to triggers, and then select when executed by another workflow. Once you create that, open it up and we're going to select define using fields below. Then you're going to manually type this out. They will all be in string format. So go ahead and create one for query ID business city. And how you create one, just hit add field and just type in. All right, get out of here and then hit save. And I'll go over the rest of this later in this video and make sure you name this workflow. And I'll show you why later in this video, I named it business URL scraper. So if we go back here, we want to know that we'll execute that sub workflow type in execute can't type today, execute sub workflow, and then hit execute a sub workflow. That's this guy right here. Open them up. Now that you have this open for source, select database, then select from list. And then remember when I said, name your workflow, this is why, because now we can select the workflow that we want. And if you remember, we named it business URL scraper, select that this will all auto populate for you. And now what you want to do is just drag in the data that you want. We want output in our query. This is basically what we're going to feed into our Google maps and Google maps will search for the businesses, Long Beach, ID, med spa. These are things that we'll need for our air table, your workflow. I already did that, but what you'll do, output goes into query, location goes to city, ID goes to ID, and business goes to business. Then you wanna make sure you select this wait for sub workflow completion because this will by default not be selected. We wanna do these executions one by one so we don't overload the workflow. And if you're building this out step by step and following along, I do recommend that you pin your data. So you can go ahead and pin this here, go ahead and pin this guy, go ahead and pin this guy. Now we're back in our execute workflow node, test the step. Now you have this data. I want you to copy this, the whole thing. So go ahead and copy that. Now we're going to go over to our other workflow, open this up. Since we're in a testing phase, we, we want some test data. So hit this edit output button, delete everything here. Now what you want to do is paste that JSON that we copied earlier right here, hit save. Now we can build this sub workflow with this test data. Next, we're going to need our HTTP request node to access Google maps. So hit the plus sign HTTP request. This is the one we want. I already have it. So I'm going to go and delete that, make sure they're connected. So I renamed it search Google maps with query and this link right here, you guys can copy. I found it on Google APIs documentation. I'll also leave it down below, but basically this portion is what you're copying. Then you're going to drag in your query from here. So I'll go ahead and delete this so I can show you. So basically what I did is dragged and dropped the query, make sure it's selected as an expression. And now you can see our query is populated here. I'm going to go ahead and hit test step. Now this node will fetch all the data of the sub neighborhoods from Google maps, but we only want the URLs because this is way too much data. Now we need to know that we'll filter all the URLs from this data. So we're going to need a code node for this. Hit code node, open it up, run once all items, select that for mode language, JavaScript, and I didn't make this. I had ChatGPT create this, but this is the output that you want. It took some time to kind of get it perfectly. Just go ahead and copy this. Trust me, I'll also link it down below. I'm just gonna show you how it works. There you go, 291 items. Go ahead and pin this data. Now we need to filter the URLs that don't look like they're med spas. This part can be a little tedious, but you'll start to see a pattern and you only need to do it once. So exit out of this node and you're going to go to the plus sign, select filter and hit filter here. So this was the easiest way for me to kind of filter everything. You guys can just copy that. Basically what we're doing, we're dragging our URL over here. And for the string type in does not match regex and just copy here. Another way that I did this was a little bit more tedious. You can also drag it here, go to table and just select things manually that don't look like they're from a med spa. So a lot of like things like Google, same thing here, drag the URL, ILH5, you can do dragging the URLs, GGPHT, doesn't look like it. 
and that's how you're going to fil filter out what's not a business and this is the most tedious part but i promise you you only have to do it once because it's all the same for any type of business on google maps another one you're going to want to type g static dashboard boulevard schedulicity so there's a lot of repeats down below like i said if you don't want to do this manually i'll link this down below so you can just copy and paste it i'm going to hit test step now now from 291 items we are down to 56 and one thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of duplicates and we want to remove them remove duplicates straightforward note make sure all fields are selected from 56 down to 33. now we want to loop them one by one to our air table loop over item like we used before we'll feed it in one by one our next air table node will be i'll show you air table type it in and you want to hit create a record hit that connect to that same Airtable account. Resource will be record, operation, create, or update. For base, select from list and select that Google Maps scraper or whatever you named that Airtable. And for table, from list again. And remember, we want that second table now, which we named websites. If you're a little lost, this is the Airtable base, Google Maps scraper, and these are your tables. We wanna make sure our website one is selected. Now we wanna manually map everything by ID, your id so go ahead and select schema on your input side we're going to go ahead and drag our id over like that from our when executed by another workflow node make sure everything is selected as an expression drag over business drag over city drag over query and then for a website it's going to be in our loop over node loop over items node i'm sorry drag that over and that's it should populate everything on the air table for you so our first workflow we have a trigger where we give a business and a city that we want our large language model to find all the sub neighborhoods of then we will feed that into our google map scraper node which will scrape all the businesses within those sub neighborhoods and then populate that into our air table now if you want to see how i scrape emails from these businesses subscribe to my channel to be notified when i release that video or if it's already out i will link it somewhere on the screen hope you enjoyed the video